Today, I will give you an update on January 2021 on family growth on eToro. Today, I will personally share five key areas of what to expect for January 2021 moving forward. Welcome back to Family Growth on eToro. My name is Alex Ko. So the first one is always to remind us the goal, performance and targets. And also the next is the current performance of what's happened last month or what key points has really happened. And then finally, point number three, you'll be moving forward and what the plans, what the changes, what stocks you'll be looking at and find the closeout for your existing portfolio holders and also future potential copy of what instructions I'll be giving you today. So let's begin with the first one, the goals. The goals about my global growth uh, portfolio is all about family growth, global diversification, We're looking for companies that focuses on growth. So I'm not talking about dividends. I'm not talking about a slow mega cap companies. We're talking about growth that can give us multiples. I want to grow from zero to six figures, meaning go from zero to a hundred thousand pounds in the fastest way possible. Of course, in a safe, relative good manner. And now for the current performance. As you can see, the chart capture out here is a screenshot of my portfolio performance. So back in November, we had a good 20% rise it was a good month after the election and then follow on to december we only got 3.61 percent gain it was a pretty tough month i felt thinking that you'd be a great bull but there were loads of stocks which i bought that didn't do really well but however i managed to capture a few good ones in majority to push it up to a positive territory of 3.6 which is a very good figure to end 2020 with and again, the risk level four, which I mentioned earlier, will be the primary fundamental target for 2020 to keep the portfolio volatility as minimal as possibly can for this growth companies. So let's go on to the key changes. So let's go on to key gains to what we've seen. So the last month in November and December, the key gains were from Nintendo. Nintendo were doing really well, going from $70 a share up to as high as $84 a share. This company is breaking out because of the potential gain despite PS5 and also new Xbox coming out. But people are still buying the Nintendo Switch. People are still buying digital games online, which is thumbs up for me and will be part of my top five and I will be buying more. And the second one that actually saved my portfolio from the drop is also Bitcoin. Managed to get in Bitcoin in November, December in a slow amount. I swing, I sold high, buy low and rebuy again. I think Bitcoin has really come into the, the portfolio and really grown with me. So I think they are here to stay for 2021. And the three key losses that I have a bit sour taste in my mouth is first Alibaba shares. Alibaba is just drop and drop and drop. Eventually halfway before they drop all the way to 200, I managed to let them go at a loss, about 20% loss. It was hard to bite, but luckily I risk transfer quickly to Bitcoin to recover as fast as I could. And the second one was uh, mRNA, Moderna, Moderna vaccine, thinking they were going up, but they were falling. But I'm glad that I cut my losses at 10% before they drop even further to as low as 25%. So losses cut, I'm not going to Moderna again. And finally, Nvidia is still sleeping. Nvidia are hovering plus minus every single day. So Nvidia is still sleeping. Hopefully for the next quarter, I'll still be holding, not gonna be buying anymore, but I'll still be holding to a point where I hope they will have a good quarter smash and then move back up again. So the next section, moving on and the plan for it for 2021 in January. So I'm going to start off by saying that I'm going to keep at least 25 to 30 percent of the portfolio in cash. I want to keep them in cash. I want to keep in cash because it'll reduce risk capital. And also if any correction, the cash will come in pretty handy. And I will be taking at least 20% of the portfolio to ETF. So ARK Invest has covered by 15% and now I've got Russell 2000. So I want to move ETF to about 20% because there's room for growth in some of these sectors and ETF is a good way to diversify. And point number three is I think I am moving forward to sell Fiverr. So once Fiverr hit the 210, 215 again, I am selling Fiverr. Why am I selling Fiverr? I'll sell it for half my stakes of Fiverr, not to hold a big uh, holdings because I want to reduce the risk. Fiverr swings way too much and this is not good for its volatility. It's not good for my copiers and not good for you guys as well. Next one is I will be buying Nintendo from 10% to 12%. I want to push Nintendo a bit more before they leave the $85 mark before the breakaway. So Nintendo is something I will buy. And the next one is Tesla. I'll be selling Tesla from the highest of 16.15 all the way to 12%. Okay, Tesla has been swinging, so it's come to a point where it's going to stagnate for the next few months. And because I own ARK as well, which hold a bit of Tesla, it's no point holding to over too much Tesla. I'll be reducing, taking profits, and hopefully put the profits at a good place for further growth. 
So what are the lists that I'll be watching in my hot list, in my watch list? The ones I'll be watching that I potentially would jump in will be Tencent, NIO, Taiwan Semiconductor or Taiwan ETF, uh, Ferrari, RAC Race, LVMH and Farfetch. So I'm looking a bit more luxury stocks because I think luxury stocks will be a good recovery stocks for 2020. So finally on the closeout message to all my existing copiers already and all the capital income, I will not be adding any funds until the next financial year, which is April in the next few months. April, I'll be adding between 25, 30%, but for this video, I'm not gonna announce any details yet because that's when you guys need to start saving money now because the addition will come in. But I'll give you guys at least a 30 days warning before I start adding funds and instruct you guys what to do. So if you are a new copier or if you're looking potentially to copy me or add more money, what would you do? So these are my instructions that I would like to share with you, which I've learned as well. So if you were to add money, I would suggest to put addition, do not copy open trades because copy open trades are the copying existing uh, trades that I have already, which I bought low, but if you buy at this point in January, you'll be buying high. So I suggest do not copy open trades, just leave the money and I'll be trading, I'll be swing trading and let you capture that gain. So that's where I hope that you can capture gains. If you copy where I bought really low, you will not really get much gain because potentially there'll be a correction coming up. So I recommend do not copy open trades, just copy. But if you want to copy open trades, I would suggest 50% of your money copy open open trades and the other 50 which you do it a second time to to open a trade do not copy it so you do 50% copy open trades and 50% do not copy and hopefully you can mimic my portfolio because some of the stuff like Nintendo Tesla and video I want to hold long term but hopefully you can also gain from the swing trades I have been doing to help me boost my portfolio even further so thank you very much I hope you enjoy uh, this update any questions please leave it below hopefully I can answer but also do visit me on YouTube if you want to follow and catch on what I do on a regular basis. Thank you very much and hopefully to see you next month for the next update in February. But for January now, hopefully we will see good gains between 2 to 5%. See you.